Okay, I think... I think we're live. Hopefully you can hear me okay, and see me okay, just had a notice that it was trying to reconnect. And if you're watching this on YouTube, this was Facebook Live first, so just get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Um, thanks for joining me, my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which tends to inspire why I do these talks. And these talks that I give every day are called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And again, these are on Facebook Live first. They will be showed replay on YouTube as well. And having done this every day, I've got quite a library. Um, today's number 376, so almost getting to 400. I'm over a year's worth, going for 400 now is the next goal, because got to have a goal. And today's topic is, um, it's going to be blunt and subtle and have a couple of next steps and solutions for you. And so this topic today is called Stop Waiting for Love. There's so much to do, or there's much to do, something like that. Unfortunately, I can't see the title now, so <laughs> I presume it's what I said. And what I want to speak to first is for those of you who have been, and this will speak towards women and men, and I may specify individual um, segments of the population if I need to do that, but right now it's for both. So, and mostly women do this, but men do this as well, is they sit at home waiting for love to show up, on the couch, watching Netflix, you know, Netflix and chill on their own, waiting for love to walk through the door. I'd say more women do it than men, because women seem to have this, and I've got to be careful how I phrase this, because I don't get in trouble, but women tend to wait for their knight in shining armor. Most men are trained to, not necessarily think to do this, but trained to go out and, and seek out their mate because that's the way it's wired. And truth be told, the historic, ancient, fabled paradigms of men and women, the man was the hunter to go pursue and court his woman and she'd be the one who would be resident at home and be courted by him coming to knock on the door and, and ask her out and everything else. So in some sense, that makes sense it would happen that way. However, we ain't there anymore. <laughs> Welcome to the 21st century. We've had some changes over the last millennia, several millennia, and I had a feeling about doing another talk, which I won't do now, about how things have been changed since women's liberation happened and the sexism, sexual revolution, the feminist movement, whichever title when you give or that. That's the same, that's three, same, three labels for the same thing. Things have changed since then. But I want to speak more to this as an overarching principle. That topic may come up tomorrow. We'll see. It's been sitting on my, on my radar for a while. And that's even more provocative than my usual ones. But today's talk, getting back on track, is about the um, presumption that love will just knock on your door. Or, as is more often the case nowadays, will show up on your phone in the form of a picture or profile on a dating app. We can just swipe them and they'll just come into your life just like that. And it does make things very convenient in this, if you're doing that sort of thing, because reality is you can actually meet somebody, get to know them without even leaving your couch. Presuming they actually talk to you over the phone, because it's a lot better than texting, by the way. If they're writing messages to you, raise the bar, make it a phone call. But again, that's the easy way to do it in sense, but it's also not the most effective way. If you're looking just to go on dates, keep doing it. That works fine. It's an easy way out, an easy solution, and all you have to do is basically swipe right or click on whatever it is the person's profile, and they like you back, and then they'll call you and, or text you, and then you get together and things go from there. In rare instances, it does happen, but in rare instances, that actually leads to true love, long-term relationship, and marriage, if that's what you're looking for. If you're not, again, the dating app will do what it does, you'll be fine. If you're looking for more than that, keep watching, because <laughs> I have some insights for you. And I said, as the second part of my title, there's much to do. And there's two things, two aspects, two um, themes I want to cover in this talk about what to do. And one of them is pretty well versed in my work, and it's actually the basis of one of my online programs, which is really get clear about what you want. It sounds so simple to say, get clear about what you want. I mean, it's very easy to say it, but for most people, they don't know what that is. I mean, do you know what you want exactly in a relationship? What partnership you want to have? Or are you just simply looking for someone who's going to feel okay when they show up? Or someone who's going to be not like your ex one, ex was, because that was horrible. 
because that's the thing. Most people's vision of relationship, most people's image, um, feeling, or experience of relationship is based on those sort of criteria. Some general feelings and some aversions of what happened before. Now, that'll help a little bit. But if you want to turn up the juice and have something really happen more effectively and more aligned to what you really do want, you've got to know what you really do want. You know? <laughs> kind of obvious, I know. So how would you do that? Because the thing is, you can simply say, well, I know what I want. Well, when you're asked that question, how do you respond? Do you actually have in your mind, in your awareness, a list of 10 things, 15 things, 20 things that you must have in your relationship? Because if you don't, you might have things on your list unconsciously that you don't want. So it's good to know ahead of time, first of all, what you don't want. In fact, give me a secret away now. The first module of my online program called Attract the Man You Want, which is for women mostly, just so you know, is about getting clear of what you don't want. It's the, it's the red flag piece that needs to be done before you move forward. And that element changes the paradigm. But once you have that, it gives you the springboard into what you do want. And yes, vision boards are great to use for that. If you know what vision boards are, I can help you with that if you're not sure what those are. Making lists, um, drawing pictures, um, cutting out pictures of the magazines of the sort of partner you're looking for. And, and that's you got to be careful with because you don't look at them as a, the facial the impression they make, but the feeling tone you get from them. But those sort of things will help you get things in motion. So one um, theme I want to speak to is the, is the creation process. And more for women than for men, to be honest, because women, you have this ability to attract what you want, and that's the power of using clarity for attraction. So getting clear about what you want is a key part of this puzzle. That's one thing to do, as in action, activity, participation, to get it happening. The second piece, which a, bit, a lot of people forget, is, well, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you're sitting on your couch, get off the couch, get out the house. In particular, if you're looking for more than just a date, you want some serious, seriously amazing relationships, or a serious relationship, yeah, I mean, kind of one, one, one that lasts a long time versus several, I can't speak to what you want, I'm just saying what I recommend. If you have clarity about a relationship you want to have, first of all, get clear about what the vision is, that's the first piece, that's the theme I talked about. The second theme about doing things is get active in the things that you love. Meaning, things that call you out of the world. And I don't mean your job. Well, if you love your job, that's great, but that's not what I mean. I mean vocational, hobby, passion, love, things that you enjoy doing. Whether it is yoga, or cooking classes, or feeding the homeless, or hiking. Whatever those activities are that inspire you, that fuel, fuel your heart, and fill your soul, do those more actively than you've been doing in the past. There's two payoffs from this. Yes, there's two payoffs from this. Actually, maybe more, let me think. One, let me get the two out of the way, there might be a third, we'll see. But the first one is by doing so, it will get you out of your head of waiting for that person to show up. By being active and fully immersed in those activities, you'll be fully engaged and having fun and enjoying yourself. So part two, which is right behind that, yeah, there are three. Part two, which is right behind part one, is by being fully immersed and engaged in what you're doing and loving doing it, you'll start to radiate joyfulness and happiness and love. It makes you more attractive. Yes, it makes you more attractive. That's a good thing to have in your um, quiver, if you want to talk about it, like if you want a black bow and arrow or something. But having, having in your toolkit, even better yet, an experiential feeling of feeling joyful, loving, expressive, makes you more attractive to the opposite sex or to the ones you're looking for. That was two. Number three, if there is a third, is when you're out in the world doing these activities, doing these wonderful things that fuel you and fill you up, you tend to meet people who have a like mind of what you're doing. They're in the same, um, they're in the same disposition that you are. In the sense that if you love going to work with animals at the animal shelter, and you meet somebody else there who does the same thing, there's a rapport there, there's a, there's a common ground there. And by chance, you might be somebody who you're attracted to who acts like the same things you do. What a concept. This would be a good thing. So those three benefits from going out and doing stuff that value, you value and fill you up are smart things to do. Because I would suggest that on the first theme I was talking about, about getting clear what you want, something that would be included in there, I would recommend if it isn't already, is finding someone who has common values with you or shared values with you, enjoys doing the things you love doing. Sorry, enjoys doing the things that you enjoy doing. Enjoy, love, same thing. I think you get my point. If you find that's something important to you, wouldn't it be great to do those activities so that 
that person could show up. He or she, depending on what you like. Because you might meet somebody who can invest weapons through an app, and hopefully in the profile is more than just a picture, has a description of their hobbies and what they love doing, but some of those things aren't, get, aren't written down. In fact, you might meet somebody more accurate, actively, more accurately, more effectively, out in the world than through your phone. Mm, there's an idea. I think that makes my point clear. So, again, just to recap quickly, the two themes is one up front, get clear what you want. Put action into creating a vision, intention, desire, what you want in a relationship. That's absolutely fundamental because dating randomly isn't really going to get you where you want to go unless you don't care. Again, randomly dating if you don't care, fine. If you know where you want to go, get clear about what that is. Then you can create the traction of what you want. Second activity, second doing thing, action theme, is to get out and do stuff in the world that fills you, fuels you, and inspires you. And doing that makes you more attractive, gets you out of your head so you're not thinking about what you don't have, and makes you more, or puts you in places where you might meet somebody who would fit your paradigm. And, benefit, it's a way cheaper date <laughs> if you meet somebody there. So why not do that activity every week, on the Saturdays or on the weeknights, wherever that fits for your schedule. But I recommend your home, this is your homework, I recommend that those two things are things you focus on. One is to get clear about what you want. You don't really have that clarity in your, in your heart, in your vision, in your journal, set or your vision board. Secondly, get out in the world and do things you love to do. Serve and participate in things that are fun. Again, cooking classes could be fun. It could be going to yoga or it could be going to the gym even. I mean, some relationships get, do get born in the gym, although I don't recommend that for men because you can be, some women hate that approach. So I'm not going to coach you on that one. <laughs> so doing other things that are not about proving yourself physically as much as it's proving yourself from your heart. Actually, that's a good point. Those activities, the activities I talked about doing out in the world, I recommend that you do them when they're inspired from your heart level more than from your head or from your ego. Because ego-based activities are generally pretty obvious and they actually make you less attractive rather than more attractive. Do you want to go further down that road? Maybe I will, quickly. When I mention going out in the world and do things that fill you, like cooking classes, or yoga, or working with the homeless, or hiking, doing things that fill you up, make you feel good, especially if they're things that really make you feel alive and full, are great activities. Doing things that stroke your ego so you can look good and be impressive to other people, strokes your ego and doesn't fill you up. In fact, it makes you unattractive. So I mentioned earlier about how it makes you more attractive when you're doing those things that you love to do and fills you up. Ego-based activities will only attract people who are impressed by your ego, and you don't want that. So TC, you had a question, what, what about the guy who tells you he doesn't want a relationship? Well, if he doesn't want a relationship, I, that's a very limited question for an answer I can give you, because it, 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 ideally, he's telling you the truth. I can't give you more information than that because you don't have more context for me to give you feedback on. And if you want to talk about more, more about that, reach out to me and have a conversation. I don't want to do this broadcast, but thank you for that anyway. Um, in fact, let me tell you about that quickly so you know where to go. On my website, which is barrysobey.com, I offer a discovery session as my gift to you. Discovery session, which is a 30-minute uh, complimentary clarity conversation to get clear about where you are, what you want, and where you're going. If you want that, I advise you to sign up for one of those to get a chat with me. You go to barrysobey.com uh, forward slash chat, or you can just go to barrysobey.com. My site improves everything I have. On the left-hand side of the menu is the Let's Chat button. Click on that and sign up for this conversation. That will be my recommendation. And anybody else who's looking for help in the area of relationship, I invite you to do that as well. Um, this video, by the way, is number 376, as I mentioned. So over a year's worth. You can find all of these broadcasts on my business page on Facebook. And you have discovered that also on my video album on my personal page, too. Although they're not as listed by titles, you have to keep clicking and see which one's which. But on my Facebook business page, you can scroll through my... You're welcome... Thank you. Thank you for asking as well. And, and again, if you want to go deeper, I can help you with that. Um, replays of this are on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And I also put them onto YouTube, as I mentioned at the beginning. The, the, I have a playlist on, on um, YouTube that is growing every day. <laughs> 376, including this one, will be up there. If you go to my channel, which is Barry Sylvia, and click on the uh, Messages from the Masculine playlist, and I actually will put that list in the comments later on for this broadcast, you can cruise through every single one of my broadcasts from right back to number one, which was over a year ago. 
there's a lot of content out there and uh, browse through the titles to find what matches up for you these also do end up on my website as well on the video blog on my website again barrysilver.com click on the video blog to watch them there and I mentioned your homework which is to start getting clearer and getting out of the world and if anybody should watch, if there's anybody you think should watch this please share it with them I'll be back again tomorrow with another talk that'll be 377 I'm not sure what it'll be yet this one was inspired from just having a question in my head about what should I talk about today so five minutes before I sat down the time for presenting itself so I can't tell what tomorrow's is going to be because I'm not that far ahead but thanks for watching thanks for being with me and I'll see you again soon bye